Today we're going to talk about reconstructing evolutionary trees. And the way that we're going to begin is uh, with a story that may not seem connected to evolutionary trees. This looks like a pretty typical hotel, but it's actually the site of an important moment in 21st century history. It's in Hong Kong, and it used to be called the Metropole Hotel. A Chinese doctor checked into room 911 of this hotel on February 21st, 2003. He had been treating patients in a rural area of mainland China who were suffering from a deadly respiratory illness, and he had come to Hong Kong for a wedding the next day. But when the next day came around, he was too sick to attend, and he wound up checking himself into a hospital down the street from the hotel. Two weeks later, he was dead. Now you're probably wondering, why on earth would I tell this sad story? So let me travel back in time to the 14th century when the Black Death killed a third of all Europeans. The Black Death was lethal, but it was also very slow. It took four years for the Black Death to travel from Constantinople, or modern-day Istanbul, to Kiev. These days, you could do that trip by car in just a day, or just two hours by plane. In the 21st century, though, all it takes for a disease to go global and become a crisis on the world scale is for one person to travel from an isolated place in rural China to a business hotel in densely populated Hong Kong. Just on the ninth floor of the Metropole Hotel, the Chinese doctor infected 13 other people from around the world. Two days after he checked in, the disease was in Hanoi. Three days after that, it crossed the Pacific to Toronto. Two days after that, it entered Singapore. In other words, the disease was a global epidemic before anybody even realized it was a global epidemic. In fact, it was a global epidemic before it even had a name. Today, we know this disease as Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS. So the bad news is that globalization means that diseases travel fast in the 21st century. But there are so many zombie movies out there on such widely varying topics as Abraham Lincoln killing zombies or zombie beavers that I hope you already know that. In the bottom middle, there was even a SARS-inspired zombie movie that was based on Star Wars and called, believe it or not, SARS Wars. That's the bad news. The good news is that we have a lot more weapons against epidemics in the 21st century as well. Researchers quickly realized that they were dealing with a special type of virus called a coronavirus when they looked at SARS under a microscope. Why is this called a coronavirus? Because when you look at it under the microscope, it looks like the sun's corona during a solar eclipse. Now, coronaviruses, like HIV and influenza, are RNA viruses, which means that they possess RNA, not DNA. In 2003, Researchers quickly sequenced the SARS coronavirus, which makes up a genome with 29,751 nucleotides. Here's a short snippet from the end of this RNA genome. Now, RNA replication has a much higher error rate than DNA, which means that RNA viruses are able to mutate fast. This is why the flu shot changes from year to year. And it's also why there are so many different types of HIV and why we don't have a vaccine for HIV either. It's very difficult to vaccinate against something that can mutate so quickly. Here we see it's mutated just in the time I'm talking to you. Now, researchers initially thought that like HIV and influenza, SARS had jumped from animals to humans. They first blamed birds because of the similarity of SARS with bird flu, a form of influenza that originated in chickens and first crossed the species barrier to humans in 1997. But which animal did give us SARS? How was it that we came to be infected in the first place? And how can we reconstruct its path that it traveled around the world? It may not seem like it immediately, but all of these questions are related to constructing evolutionary trees, which are also commonly called phylogenies. For example, here's the first evolutionary tree, which was drawn by Charles Darwin in 1837. And here's a phylogeny that's constructed for HIV and its relatives, just from this evolutionary tree, we can infer that HIV crossed the species barrier from monkeys to humans at five different places marked by stars. 
these five different crossings divide HIV into five different viral families. Now, from this HIV diagram, it should be clear that if we want to know which animal gave us SARS, we should just construct an evolutionary tree for the SARS coronavirus, as well as coronaviruses from other species. Then, we simply see where SARS is located in this tree with respect to other coronaviruses. But the question remains, though, what algorithms do we need to use in order to construct evolutionary trees?